Let's be real, guys. Most AI courses overpromise and underdeliver. In fact, I would argue that most online courses in general are smoke and mirrors. I've taken several scammy courses. But I recently finished this course called Google Prompting Essentials from Coursera. And I had to admit, I actually learned quite a bit about how to write effective prompts. And there were some other AI tips and tricks that I learned in here. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what I liked about this course, what I didn't like. And that way, at the end, you can decide if this is something that you want to take. So be sure to stick around for the entire video. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you find these types of videos valuable, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and also leave me a comment below. But now let's dive back in on reviewing this Google prompting essentials course from Coursera. Now, if you've never heard of Coursera, this is one of the most popular online course platforms that has thousands, if not millions of different courses at this point in various subjects and categories. And when it comes to AI, I've actually taken a few courses on here. I actually used Coursera a while ago when I was learning digital marketing and SEO. And I can honestly say that I learned more from these online courses than what higher education taught me in four years. So Coursera is a really good platform. And the most recent course that I took is called Google Prompting Essentials. I have to admit, I was a little skeptical because anything from Google always has me a little skeptical. Um, but when I see that almost 10,000 people are enrolled, it has over 100 reviews, 4.7 out of 5 stars. I thought, you know what, guys, I might as well take this course and see if I can learn anything from it. That way I could help my AI outputs and also help you guys in future videos on this channel. So first of all, who is this course for? How much does it cost? And what are the tangible outcomes that you'll get from taking it? Those are the first things I ask myself whenever I look into any course. And number one, this is as beginner level. I completely agree with that, especially module one. This is very intro level stuff on how to prompt AI tools. Modules three and four, it does get a little more complex and it actually challenged me a little bit on some of them. Uh, but again, if you're brand new to AI, you have no idea how to prompt these tools or even how to use AI or where to get started, I would agree that this is a beginner level. Now, in terms of cost, I believe the course costs 40 or $50. I'm not seeing the pricing right here. I did see it before I signed up, but I actually signed up for the seven day free trial of Coursera Pro. And I'd recommend you guys do that as well. I do have an affiliate link below this video. If you guys are interested in trying this, it does come at no additional expense to you, but helps support my channel. Um, so I'd recommend starting with the seven day free trial. And then it starts at $59 a month after that I believe, but sign up for the free trial, take this course or another AI related course, and then you can cancel it after that if you're not satisfied. But that's for the cost. When it comes to the tangible outcomes, you'll see here what you'll learn. You'll practice using five steps to writing effective prompts. They do have a framework, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. That's actually helped me craft my prompts, apply prompting techniques to help you with everyday work tasks. I agree with that. Use prompting to speed up data analysis and build presentations. There was a whole module about that. And it also talked a lot about AI agents for role-playing conversations and getting expert feedback. The idea of AI agents is only becoming more important as time goes on with AI. Now, another cool feature you get if you complete this course and pass all of the exams is you do get a certificate that you can share on your LinkedIn profile, your resume, your portfolio website, just something that looks good to potential employers. But I will say before I harp on this certificate, I did complete this course, but unfortunately what I realized when I click get my certificate early is that they don't let you get the certificate unless you pay for at least a month of Coursera Pro. So you can not just go in, get the free trial, complete the course just solely for the certificate, you do have to pay a month of $59 to get access to the certificate or any other certificates of any of the courses that you complete on Coursera. I think it's really important that I bring that up as I was really looking forward to posting that certificate on my LinkedIn account. So now I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into what this course actually entails. And number one, it says nine hours to complete. That looks a little daunting. And I'm going to be honest, this course probably took me two or three hours to complete. I was actually doing it at the gym, multitasking, watching videos, taking courses. If you're an intermediate on AI, this should take you two to three hours. If you're a complete beginner, okay, I could maybe see nine hours. When it comes to the actual modules themselves, there are four different modules. And the first module is all about really an intro to prompting 
prompting, intro to AI, perfect for beginners. I actually really like this lesson on the five-step prompt framework. Uh, that opened my mind a little bit. It talks about generating images. Module tool was how do we put these prompts into action for real-world activities like productivity, summarization, save time at work, writing emails. Module three was all about data insights, how we can use AI to analyze, extract data, and also create compelling presentations. And then module four was all about AI agents. I really liked module four. That's probably my favorite one out of all four of them. Um, but that is a quick little sneak peek of the course. So now I want to talk about the pros and cons of this course, as there were some things that I liked and there were also some things that I disliked. When it comes to pros, one of the very first things that I enjoyed from this course is they had a memorable prompting framework called TCREI. Task, context, references, evaluate, iterate. And it doesn't matter whether you're just using Google Gemini, which is obviously what they show. It's a Google course. This applies to ChatGPT, Claude, Llama, any large language model that you guys are doing. For task, obviously you're assigning it the task, the importance of that. Context, giving it context in the prompt, giving it references, evaluating the responses of the prompt. And then most importantly, in my opinion, is iteration. Coming back and fine tuning responses, you can keep getting your desired outputs. I think this framework is a really good fundamental, especially for those who are brand new to AI and just have no idea how to prompt these tools, which is still a lot of people, guys, if I'm being honest. And I think having this framework in your mind TCREI does a really good job when you're first learning how to prompt these AI tools. So another part of this course that I thought was very useful was this section here on multimodal prompting. Now, a lot of people actually don't know what this means, where most people, if you go to AI tools, they just start typing in text prompts and they expect to get back text responses. That was the first iteration of LLMs. Well, now they're becoming more multimodal, meaning they can combine text image generation, audio generation, eventually video generation with Sora and VO in the background of these AI video models. So the idea and understanding how to effectively prompt with multimodal functionalities is only going to become more popular and important as time goes on. They do give an example of what this looks like in the real world, where they talked about generating a marketing poster or a YouTube thumbnail where you're generating the image, but you also need to make sure text within that image is spelled correctly. So there are a lot of different use cases for multimodal prompting, and I'm really glad that they covered that in this course. Now, I have to admit another part I did like down here is when they talked about using generative AI responsibly, but also when they talked about mitigating hallucinations. And I think people who are brand new to AI, they might look at these TikTok bros or people on YouTube doing all this clickbait stuff. Oh my God, AI is a silver bullet. Check out this tool. Check out this secret prompt. And it changed my life, right? We see these videos all the time. And I'm glad that they called out that BS, basically having a whole section on how these tools are not a silver bullet. They still frequently hallucinate. They're biased in a lot of extents and they cannot solve all of your problems. They should be used as a tool and not a crutch. So I'm really glad that they covered content around that. Now, something else I enjoyed about this course was they used a lot of real world examples. And honestly, guys, I've made tutorials already on my YouTube channel for a lot of the, the use cases that they mention here. They talk about summarization. They talk about brainstorming ideas. I love using AI for ideation. I have several videos talking about that. Uh, they talk about meeting notes. I've had a couple videos about AI note takers summarizing lengthy documents. That's one of the best real world use cases of AI right now, in my opinion. So I like how they have a ton of real world examples versus just throwing videos at you and saying, watch these videos and just expect you to learn things. They're actually showing real world use cases, which I appreciate. I will say my number one favorite part of this entire course was the section on AI agents. So many people that are just getting into AI, they have no idea of what this concept is. An AI agent is essentially an AI bot that can do everyday menial mundane tasks for you. That way you can go on with your day to day. So for example, I have an AI agent that optimizes my YouTube videos. You can think of this in the form of custom GPTs, if you're familiar with that on ChatGPT, Claude Projects, if you're using Claude. And I believe Gemini has ones called Gems. I think that I've never actually used those. 
but that would be an example of an AI agent. So I have one that optimizes my YouTube videos. I have one that optimizes my podcast episodes. I have a graphic designer AI agent. I have an SEO expert AI agent where I copy and paste all my blog posts and basically say, you're an expert in SEO and I upload all the Google guidelines, hundreds and hundreds of pages worth. It evaluates, analyzes the results for the, for the target keyword, gives me feedback, very detailed feedback. So as I keep rambling, this is the next phase of AI, our AI agent. So it's very, very important that you take a course like this. I'm not saying you have to take this specific course to learn about AI agents, but you need to start understanding what AI agents are and how you can start leveraging them. Now, I must admit there were several things about this course that I did not like as I was going through it and also as I was done and evaluating. And I think the number one thing that I really disliked about this course is how pro Google it was. It was pro Google Gemini. Everything was about Google's AI models, which I understand it's a Google prompting essentials course. And I kind of expected that. But the reality is here is Chad GPT is more popular than Google Gemini by far. I would argue that Claude is climbing up there. And most people that are new to AI, they use Chat GPT. They don't use Google Gemini. So I, w I wish there was you know, some module about comparing Gemini to other models. I understand why Google didn't do that. It's in their best interest. Um, but if I'm being honest, Chat GPT and Claude are better models than Google Gemini right now. So I just wish they would have incorporated that into the modules, maybe showing case by case examples of when you should use this, when you shouldn't use that. Uh, I just wish they would have talked about other AI models versus just 100% pro Google. And that's my biggest complaint when going through this course. Now, another critique of this course is, yes, they did have some good real world examples and lessons in here, summarization, productivity, uh, data analysis, presentations, uh, writing emails. But in my opinion, this is the bread and butter of someone who's new to AI. There needs to be more real world examples of use cases. So for instance, they barely touched on ideation. And in my opinion, that's one of the most important things, especially someone new to AI should be learning a lot about. They also did not talk about content creation a lot, short form and long form for ad copy for SEO optimized blog posts. They also did not talk about content repurposing. And again, maybe this is bias coming from a marketer content creator. These are things that I would have liked to seen from this course, especially the idea of repurposing content, how you can use generative AI in this five-step framework to use you know, one YouTube video and repurpose that into an SEO optimized blog post, into social media posts, into an email newsletter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some very good use cases that I think that they did not touch on in this course. And I think that has to be said. Now, another thing I didn't like about this course, and this goes for kind of the earlier modules. And again, I understand this is tailored for beginners. This might be a nitpicky uh, thing that I'm criticizing here. But in the very beginning, I just felt that like this one was five minutes, four minutes. There were just so many of these videos that weren't to the point. It was two people talking. It was a couple of people that worked at Google. And then sometimes there was just one person that worked at Google where they just sat there and talked for half the video without actually diving in and showing you how things worked and giving you practical examples. Now, don't get me wrong. They did do that. I just thought that there was a lot of fluff and informational content that you could just go to YouTube or go to Google and just find out informational content that way. I just wish there was more time and maybe there was, and again, maybe I'm being nitpicky about this. I just wish that there was more time spent on the actual use cases and practical examples of how we can use generative AI in the real world versus just talking about it for half the time and then showing you a quick example within the lessons. So with all of that being said, if you're brand new to AI and still consider yourself a beginner, this Google prompting essentials course from Coursera is a very good introductory option for you. And especially if you want to get on that seven day free trial, there's more than enough time to not only take this, but all the other different courses on AI that you can scroll through here on Coursera. I think that's a really good place to start is that seven day free trial. So again, I did enjoy this course. There were some good takeaways. Like I talked about earlier, there were some things I disliked about this course. Um, but regardless, if you're new to AI, you will definitely learn a lot in this Google prompting essentials course. So I appreciate you all who have made it this far into the video. If you found value, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Also leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you want me to provide more reviews of these popular AI courses that a lot of beginners are taking and then provide my feedback on them? Really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.